ratings there, spacefaring play called Humans? I'm not sure whether or not you sought out a cool shooter or a spaceship piloting game, or just got dragged here out of the sheer morbid curiosity that is Star Citizen. Today I'll try to answer the age-old question of, is Star Citizen worth it? Now, my viewers, community and avid stalkers will probably know what's about to happen, but I'll assume that everyone here is new, you've never seen or heard of me, or Star Citizen. Let's then dispense of sarcasm at first and start things on a level knowledge playground. What even is Star Citizen? For a more elaborate answer, you can check out a video I specifically did on this question a while back. But in brief, setting aside my own thoughts, uh, to simply put, Star Citizen is a video game. In making, that is. It can be played like this. Or like this. Though most of the time it will look like this. To play it, you need to quote-unquote buy it, or rather buy into it, and <coughs> yes, I know, I'm making it sound like a cult or something, and <coughs> some would say that it even acts and operates as one. Still, it works more or less like a kickstarted crowd-funded game. Excuse me? Did I just spawn in dead? If you pledge enough money, you get to play it early. Oh, and to make things even more convoluted, there's a second video game that no one can play until it's done, called Squadron 42, and that will be a single-player campaign. There, that's kind of what Star Citizen is. So, clearly the quote-unquote worth it part of the question will basically come from those who want a video game and stuff to play right now, which means that we'll be looking into the quote-unquote multiplayer open world part of the Star Citizen project. Excuse me, Star Citizen! While we each have our individual value charts as to what constitutes as what is worth it and what is not, I'll try to simply explain what works in the first place, what doesn't, and what you may need to watch out for, and while doing that, maybe answer the question for you. Oh, and before I go off, no, I will not promote any of the garbage pyramid scheme bullshit code crap, cause once a pyramid scheme bullshit and it can go fuck itself off. Overall, Star Citizen adheres to space in principle. You got a spaceship and you go in the open world and do stuff with your spaceship. Star Citizen just simply injects the first person aspect to it, either as an obstacle or an as immersive element. By this I mean that, let's say you decide to go trade cargo. Now first you need to walk with your body to the cargo dealer, buy the stuff, then go to your ship, then use that ship to travel to the place you need to sell it, get out of the ship, then go to the different market trader and sell it to them. It can't just be done through never leaving the ship. Whether that's a point of annoyance or is it a point of great immersion for you is really up to you as always, but I frankly really like it. Well, I also don't mind just being able to do it through the ship either. You might have already noticed that Star Citizen, despite coming from 2014, 15, well, depending really when you start counting releases, still looks like a very high detail game in today's time. Well, it certainly is one of the pride points of Star Citizen, as a lot of work has gone into modeling everything, and if you enjoy spaceships, well, that's exactly where the most modeling has gone into specifically. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about the overall visuals. While there's a lot of detail, when it comes to effects, emissions, particles, vistas, well, Star Citizen struggles. Well, some areas are really nice looking and all that good stuff, as soon as you step outside them you start to notice massive drop in fidelity. Sure, I'm a cynical piece of shit, but even I want that spectacle testicle to be consistent. Anyways, actual gameplay wise, Star Citizen is a space sim, and as such in modern days you can expect three typical styles of gameplay. Trading, combat and exploration. So, how are they? 
Let's then begin with the space trucking that most space sims are known for. Now, trading is as typical as it gets, but interesting that there are two types of it. Ships have normal cargo space that gets automatically filled, and with a little bit of flair, you can actually see it in-game in your ship, if you can walk through it. And the second type is the actual physical first-person item delivery. Granted, the so-called box mission is just different-looking same-size placeholder-looking A to B gameplay. But for low-paying, easy jobs, it oddly fits the bill. Though here you might encounter to this day many bugs and broken mechanics of Star Citizen. Now, I cannot tell you how many times the box had phased through my ship because it's a physical object within another physical object, and upon landing me realizing that the box I dropped inside my ship just yeeted itself out just to spite me makes me curse that I ever chose to do this sort of a mission, wasting a solid half hour of my playtime. Or maybe the Star Citizen will just decide not to accept your box at the delivery point. <sighs> to say the least, it's frustrating. As for the ship cargo trading, well, I suppose it works. Though prices for these commodities you can buy or sell, well, without a good old third party tools made by somebody on the internet, your guess will be good as mine whether you can sell anything for profit or where to sell it in the first place. Yeah, while well, the gameplay exists, it's what charitably can be called minimum bitch level. Oh, and mining exists too, both for ships and first person. For ships, it's actually far more engaging and finished than trading, while hand mining, as it's known for the first person, d don't, j j just don't fucking do it. It's so fucking bad. J just don't. Look at this quality fucking physics encoding. Plus, you're gonna also do a lot of it in jail anyways. Fucking kill me! Okay, well, at least flying is cool, right? Well, flying against other ships and having space pew pews is coolest and easiest selling point for spaceship games overall. So how does Star Citizen perform here? Well, I've said this time and time again, I personally prefer most of the mechanics for not only combat, but also general flight from Star Citizen. If you've ever tried flight simulators, well, Star Citizen offers really, really cool take on spaceship simulation in a very similar way, though being a space sim, it takes liberties with certain stupidities of even modern aeroplane designs, simplifying them plenty, yet you still feel incredibly overwhelmed when getting into menus of your ship, adjusting settings and using them. The biggest issue, and again, this is the deadest horse of the Star Citizen, is the maximum speed of the ships. Because every ship can go 1000 meters a second more or less, the combat basically devolves into jousting matches, and unlike all the space combat, and even some space sims, it's just not fun. It's not fun to have a second of passing where you can unleash your guns and then need to turn around and do it again. Instead, it's exciting to be on the tail of your opponent matching speeds, more or less. Now, yes, there are, shall we say, penalties of going above combat speed, but it's an artificial limitation of Star Citizen that could have simply been done away with by lowering the average speed of every ship to, say, 4 or 500 meters a second. Seriously. As for the gameplay itself, well, you can do open world combat, which will quickly force you to meet the horribly simplistic and absolutely unchallenging AI, paired with horrible network lag that causes enemies to rubber band or teleport at worst. So, if AI does that, what do you think the PvP looks like? It's a gang fest for the most part, and now that I think of it, it starts to seem like a staple of space sims, a horrible one having little to no player protection. Great. However, there is this mini-game PvP and PvE for space combat. Here you can actually have dedicated space and matches for space combat only. It sounds like a good thing, and it kinda is. Uh, well, that is, if people would queue up for it. These days it really depends on the build of the game, if it even works, then it depends on the people actually playing it, and you know, most of the time if you're going solo, then expect a coin toss lock for a match with more than one person in it. But hey, at least it has a slightly better frame rate? 
Oh, and one more thing. Well, you can play these minigames with the ships that you have bought with money or rented with that wreck currency you earn by playing these minigames. However, what you can't do is play with the ships you've acquired in the open world or the weapons or the setup. Bottom line is, if you want a space battle, well, frankly, Star Wars Squadrons will be a more entertainment than this. Though, then again, that game is completely finished and no developments being made on it. So, I suppose maybe look for other space combat games to fill the void. And finally, exploration. Now, well, this is kind of a sad one, because there's absolutely nothing for Star Citizen. Unless you're that kind of a degenerate who thinks that making your own quote-unquote gameplay constitutes as development and developers being praised for rather than your own imagination, then I guess bravo. But seriously, aside from going to places and looking at things without an actual coded or scripted gameplay, well, you won't have any kind of an alien artifact scanning plant or even settlement discoveries. Instead, let's talk about that performance. Since Star Citizen is in quote-unquote ALPHA, and I personally have mocked there that used the phrase but, but, but it's ALPHA to pathetically defend Star Citizen and its horrible parts, performance, well, it's one of those things. Yes, it's in pre-release state, so I won't expect high level or even moderate level of optimization. That's done near the end of development. However, as a customer, your average Joe doesn't give a shit about that! Your average Joe boots up the game, sees that his GTX 1070 or something that runs most games at 60 frames on the lowest settings, including AAA titles like Cyberpunk, now sees that Star Citizen is stuttering mess with highly inconsistent 30 or less average frame rate. Then he deletes the game and thinks that, well, fuck, I wasted my money. Sadly, this is the result of having a publicly available build of the game that represents the latest development. Now, performance change from build to build, though for the free fly weekends they always improve it for, shall we say, obvious reasons. Yet still, it's an inconsistent mess, nearly unplayable on medium to low end machines, and most importantly, if you have a graphics card with less than 7 gigs of video RAM, which Star Citizen uses, expect a stuttery mess on top of the bad performance as assets get loaded in and out of hard drive. Oh, and now on top of that, as I mentioned, hard drives apologists now will replace the but it's alpha idiosity with the age old but you have to run it from SSD. Now, to clarify, I simulated this stuttery mess from a fucking NVMe SSD. So don't think that just because you have lower VRAM a little bit, you can scoot past stutteringness by having a better SSD. Remember that NAND flash is still slower than video or even normal RAM. Ultimately, the problem with Star Citizen is because they chose to let the public play the near latest builds of the game and indeed even sell their packages on that principle, you should not be surprised when the public gets annoyed and pissed off, when your dev build just plain sucks ass. Speaking of bad performance, expectedly the first-person shooter aspect, which is my absolute favorite type of gameplay, well, that's shit too. Well, not because of mechanics, mostly, but because of the low, inconsistent frame rates, which makes any FPS game become worse and worse. FPS games long since been the most sensitive to the frame rate changes and performance due to precision it requires. But what's worse is that, yes, it works like a modern FPS, and I'd say that it's pretty nice visually as well, with core mechanics, and what fails completely and ruins any joy I could potentially have is the fucking menus. Be the Moby Glass or the Context menu, not to mention the horrible, horrible, GORBAGE inventory system. Jesus Christ, I'll take any shit destiny menus over anything Star Citizen. And additionally, as I said with hand mining, prepare to meet the physics. You drop an item or an NPC drops it, say, a uh, gun. Physics. This. Constantly. Everywhere. I honestly cannot tell you how much this simply funny looking spastastic moment tells me about the netcode physics engine and fuck the whole cohesion of the so-called game. 
Because of this, I'm frankly not surprised when people call Star Citizen, at least the FPS part of it, a fucking asset flip. Because, well, most asset flip garbage on Steam actually plays better than this FPS. It's shocking, especially for such a budget project. <sighs> now, understand, I take the first-person shooters a bit more personally than any other type of a game, so that's why I might be a bit more uh, opinionated here. Now, however, if you come to Star Citizen for ships and flying them, well then yes, it's probably absolutely worth your time. However, these spaceships, if you look into the packages and their costs... WHAT?! THOUSAND FUCKING DOLLARS?! ARE YOU INSANE?! And yes, yes, you can buy it! And people do! Hell, they shell out tens of thousands for these ships. I'm seriously not joking! However, right off the bat you have typical defenders quick to yell out that oh, you can earn credits by doing missions and exchange them for these very same ships as you quote unquote play the quote unquote game. And yes, that is true as well. So we are in a rather odd place. The flying things, these truly inspired and highly detailed models have in-game and real life values. At this stage, as a mindless consumer, perhaps you're okay or unbothered by Cloud Imperium's financial and monetization model to make these two games, which many are. Others might be concerned about the pay-to-win aspect of this sort of a thing. Then some others, like yours truly, certainly is curious about the whole budget and funding of this project, its efficacy and validity, what this kind of a monetization and promotion of it does to not only just crowdfunding, but also to the wider industry. There is quite a bit to consider with Star Citizen, and you probably have your own opinion on it. But today, to be brief and not bogged down like with <coughs> FPS aspect, <coughs> just just know that the company is selling ships for money, and not insignificant small amounts either. Also, yes, you can quote-unquote purchase the same ships from quote-unquote in-game credits, though the grind is notable. As for the story content, well, there seems to be some foundational blocks for some factions and maybe story missions, but a lot of it is placeholdery as fuck, that even asset flips would be put to shame. So yeah, story just beyond the wiki level of dorkiness just does not really exist. And most of you get is randomly generated missions that themselves are placeholder level of uh, quality. So that's Star Citizen. It has promise, a lot of it, just by company's own rhetoric, of course. In real life, though, what you can do with it, well, when you look at it with critical eyes, is well rather limited at best and horribly aggravating or non-existent at worst. They say it will get better, but honestly, since 2017 and 2.6 version of the game, when I joined nearly five years ago, that still is the rhetoric, and holy shit, in that time you could have developed a whole game. But Star Citizen has gained basically just a few features. Star Citizen still has not released, it still has the same problems, just with more quote-unquote features, and I personally for the most part would call those pointless and shallow. Though it cannot be denied that it is good looking and highly detailed visually. Core mechanic wise, the space flight really is nice and does draw you in when paired with those cool ships. So it's overall, well, to be political here, a very mixed bag. While I have my own feelings on it, it's your decision ultimately whether or not it helped or not. Well, hell, if you need more convincing either way, well, from time to time they put Star Citizen as a free to play for limited time, the so called free fly weekends or something. So maybe that'll help you get an insight by simply demoing the current version. In any case, let me know what I missed or could have elaborated on a bit more. Or maybe just check out other Star Citizen videos I made. Or, well, in any case, if this helped and maybe you want to help me in turn, well, then toss a couple of bucks on my Patreon there. Really appreciate it there. But as for now, well, I'm off to do some more box missions because why not, I guess. No! No! Oh, God damn it! Oh no! <laughs>